Hey guys, welcome back. It's Paint with Josh. It's October. We're going to have an awesome time. Let me go through the colors we're going to paint with today. Dark Sienna, Sap Green, Thalo Green, Cad Yellow, uh, sorry, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow, Bright Red, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, and Titanium White. Now, I'm not sure we're going to use all those colors today, but that's what we're going to paint with. So, that's what we have on the palette anyway. Now, we've taken our black canvas and we've covered it in Bob Ross Liquid Clear. Looks a whole lot like that brand new jar. So mine's not all nasty anymore. We finally got rid of that old jar, right? So we've taken our canvas and we've covered it with the clear. While I reach all the way across the table, we're going to get a couple paper towels. We're going to wipe this area clean. And I understand if you've seen this part before, you can skip through. You don't have to wait and you can get right to the painting if you just skip through a few minutes. But for the people that don't know, you take your clear, you put it on, you wipe it off. And then poof, you're ready to go. You don't want to have too much on there, that's for sure. Now, in order to have a really cool moon in this painting that you guys have already seen, I'm literally about to paint it right now. I've never painted it before. We're going to paint it right on camera because that's what we do at Paint With Josh. We paint stuff and we see and we try and we do different things. So let's put a little bit of our, our crimson in the sky. I want to have this kind of orange blood moon. That's the goal anyway. Again, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what you guys have seen because I haven't painted it yet. So tell me where you're from, tell me what time you're watching this, and that way I can get a good judge on when my fans are online, right? So tell me where you're from, what you're doing, what time it is where you are, right when you've seen this video right now. Look at the clock, tell me what time it is. Fantastic, a little bit of our crimson up there. Now, without washing the brush, let's go into the blue, and we'll drop some bright blue, and then we'll start to mix into our purple the more it mixes onto the, onto the canvas and the brush. We'll come in here a little bit more. Ah, you can make it as blue as you want. You can make it as non-blue as you want, right? The more paint you put on there, the more it's going to go that color when we mix in with our white paint. So if you don't want to have it super bright blue, don't put a whole lot of blue there. Let's see. Let's come in here. We call this, at least I call this, the undercolors, right? The underpainting part where we can go over the top of it. And it's almost like a magic trick. All of your friends, if you sit and, and do this part in secret, and then you go, okay, guys, we're just going to paint with some white paint today. That's all I'm going to use is some white. And you show them. And then all of a sudden you get this really cool effect that starts to happen, right? Let's go back into the crimson. I want to start mixing some of these areas into like a purple with that crimson and the blue gonna be fabulous. So a little bit in there, a little bit down in here. We'll have all these different colors in our sky, different streaks, some blue, some crimson, some purple. And then no matter where we go, we should have a very cool sort of sky. And all that under color will just provide some extra little bits of brightness when we hit it with our white paint. It's gonna be gorgeous. There we go. A little bit of crimson, mostly purple around the edge. You can see we've only really used the two colors so far. Let's go wash the brush. And get it into the cup, just like that. And come out. I like to shake it a little bit, twist it inside so a lot of it falls off. Then we shake it into the can and then into the bucket. Now, if you don't know or you haven't seen how to clean your brush, I have a short video on that. It's on my YouTube feed. And uh, if you go in the shorts section, you can scroll down and find that. It'd be fantastic. So now we have our under colors there. We're going to go in and we're going to mix a little bit of white with a little bit of the yellow right on our fan brush. I want to grab both these yellows down here and bring them down there grab a little bit of the white and just start to mix it and watch it get brighter and brighter and change and all of a sudden it's not all the same color right i try to scoop some of that up onto the brush then we're going to get out the old trusty moon making cake pan right the paint with josh custom cake pan we're going to come up here we're going to put it into that red section and then we're going to go around it very lightly with the same amount of pressure if you push too hard on one side and and not the other side, then the moon's going to look lopsided. We're going to come back this way. Same amount of pressure. Just connect those guys. Bam, now we're going to have this gorgeous moon like that. Woo, look at that. That is fantastic. Take some of that yellow. Start to pull it into the crimsony under color that we have in there. Look at that color. Wow, that is a gorgeous piece of moon right there. Gorgeous piece of moon. Go some more of that white, some more of the yellow. Right, super technical with the amounts, just grabbing it up on the brush. All we're looking for is a little bit of this light color to mix in with that crimson, and then we're going to bring it back down into its darker thing. 
Look at that, just very lightly grabbing it from the edge, little half circular swipes, like you're making a little smiley face. See what I mean? Exaggerated right there, but sort of exactly what we want. Grab that edge, don't go outside the edge, all right? Come down and touch, little half circles, especially very small ones up the top. You don't have to feel it all the way in. All right, turn the brush over, grab the edge again, pulling it from the side, just like that. Pulling it across with our little swipes. Bam, just shredding it all the way to the other edge. Spread it, don't go outside of our circle. Let's spread it to the edge, just like that. It starts to mix in, you start to drag darkness over here into our bright area. And you start getting all these cool little differences, right? And soft little differences. And you can tell all these little fan brush strokes, they're not what we want. We don't wanna see all those. So we're gonna come back and hit it with a softer brush. And that softness of that brush is gonna blend out all these little strokes. Fantastic, cool little mountain, just a uh, little moon, not a mountain. <clears throat> cool little moon, grabbing from the light area. All right, right on the edge, bend your brush, push it flat against there, pull it. Look at how much softer it's becoming. Blending all of those little things. All right, same little circular motions. You don't wanna ruin that thing. You wanna follow the same guidelines that we left. Look at that beautiful pink and purpley and yellow. Got our dark area up here. All right, now we're gonna take what we have on the brush and just start to drag it in lightly from the other side starting to shape that arc of that darkness, right? Very lightly. Just so you have a little bit of that dark, start to try to grow its way across into the light side, right? And then it's not just one bright, perfect, depthless thing. This one's got a lot of depth in it. You can see all the shadows, the light areas, the dark areas, where the light's hitting it from its sun. Whatever it is, whatever's lighting up this moon, it's coming from this side, All right? The more and more you blend it, the more dark you'll make it on this side. Just be careful not to go out of your edge. Very soft. Just like that. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, now we can take a dry fan brush and any little bits that you got on the outside, just blend them away, just very simply. Taking them around the edge, right? Just any little imperfections you have. I had a couple. I'm trying to do it quickly. You guys can take your time. You don't want to touch the shape of your moon though. That's going to be bad. And wipe off any dark paint that we got on that brush right there. <clears throat> That's very cool. Now let's put a couple clouds way off in the distance. And all we're going to do here, let's wash this brush off, get that yellow color out of there, right? Into the old trash can, into the bucket, comes out. Nice and clean, dry it off though. Don't ever just get it out of your, your shaker and back into here. Let's take a little bit of our white and who knows, let's throw maybe a littlest bit of our phthalo green in here. Smallest bit though, mainly white, mainly white. And that's gonna help brighten up that blue section and give us some cool clouds to play with, right? So if we had something, shoot, I don't know. I don't even know, what could we do? We could do all sorts of stuff. We could do like the a little that thing, we could do a little portal, we could do all sorts of things. Or we could just take and make a giant mess, right? We could go like this, start to change, look at that color. Whoosh! Very cool little bits. Now the closer we come to our moon, then we're, we're gonna have to go into a darker shadowy color like that, right? You don't wanna do too much. Very cool little bit of cloud. Just by making a mess, grabbing our one inch brush again, coming back in, so I can stay out of your guys' way and just go like that, just mixing it up, all right? Mixing it up, maybe we'll come across into the moon just the littlest bit, see that? Almost looks like there's a hole in the moon shooting out cloud, which is a cool idea for another painting. Right? Any little bit we can get to come up here and brighten up that area, just so it's not so super dark up in the top, right? You can always add little things, little bits of cloud that maybe came in, just little things though. Don't want to make it too bright. It's going to take away the focus, right? Like we'll do it double-handed. Come in here, we'll tap in a few little bits, make a little mess. Come back over here with our one inch brush. Make a little cloud out of it. That's all you really got to do. It's that simple. Maybe make some over here. Just a littlest little mess. Come back over here. It's like 
painting in double. Very cool. All right. And we had just a little bit more of that coming in there, right? And then you just take it and you mix it very softly. Very cool. All of a sudden you get these really cool things that start to happen when you take a chance and you play around. All right, let's go back in here and grab that same color. It's over here. And who knows, maybe there was like a little bit, it was like a further off, little straighter bit of a cloud back there. Right? Just however you want to make yours. It doesn't even matter. Just make a mess. That's what I say all the time. You're like, oh, it's not the same. You make it look so easy. Just make a mess. And then as you're going over it, don't overdo. Don't overdo it. That's it. That's how we make, that's how we make them look like that. You just don't overdo it. You do too much and you're not going to like it. Right? Let's take a little bit more of that brighter, whiter color up here. And just start to kind of shape in just little things, little details, just by bouncing it all over the place. Right? And we'll get these little brighter areas as we go back and we mix again. And we'll start to mix and mix and mix and mix until you can't see your little brush strokes anymore. And all of a sudden, you've got these little brighter areas and darker areas where the sky and the, the light is hitting the cloud a little bit differently. And just keep going until you like the way that it looks. That's really it. That's really it. We can do something like that. We'll take our two-inch brush instead. Maybe pull up, maybe pull down. What's that look like? Very kind. Of, it's it's kind of neat. I like it. That's all you really got to do. You want a very cool little way to throw in a couple little clouds. Take a little bit of liquid white, and we're going to flick it right off the edge of the palette, right? It's just... Toss in a couple little stars, pop, 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 just like that. Bam. Cool little things in a random pattern. You don't need to have a whole lot of paint. If you do it too much, you're not going to like how it looks, right? But very cool. You get these very far away, small, little teeny tiny things. And stay close to your palette so you don't flick it all over your house, right? Just like that. Very cool. Soft little far away things. Far away. Take any little pieces of those that got onto our moon, just very lightly, going over those. All right, bam, 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 bam. Making it soft. Now, one of these guys, you could take anyone that's a little bit big. You're like, yeah, oh, it's a little too big. I don't really like it. Take him, grab him, flick him. You get this far off little shooting star back there. Mine, I didn't have too many that weren't very big. So we had to rock and roll like that. Now, let's take a second. We're going to clean up some areas to work in here. Get rid of all these darker paints over here. We'll probably use that, save it, turn it into something else. Be a darker color up here eventually. Or maybe we could use it as a highlight. Be like a grayish kind of light on our, on our stones or whatever we do in the foreground, right? All right, get that stuff out of the way. Now, we got to make up a far away little mountain. All right, a cool little mountain. You're like, Mountain Josh, I've seen it. We know what it is, right? So let's get our, our black and crimson and blue. Just like that. Maybe a little red, too. Why not? It'll make it go dark. There we go. Again, ours isn't a perfect rendition of what we're trying to paint. It's my own version, right? There we go. Let's throw a little bit of that dark sienna brown, or the Van Dyke brown. I don't have any dark sienna brown, so... Uh, that's a good segue to what I was going to thank you. Uh, what I was going to ask you guys, if you can go check out my Amazon wish list on my link tree, and we'll post a link in this video. Uh, I run. I've, I've added a whole bunch of new paints and different things. I'm sort of running out of stuff to paint on. So if you can go check out the wish list, it's a couple bucks. Send me a, a tube of paint or a new palette knife or a new brush. I've got all sorts of stuff on there. Go check it out. Got our nice dark color over here. Now we're going to come in. We're going to grab up that darkness. Not a whole lot, though, because I don't want it to be too crazy. We're going to plan out our shape here. Our shape is going to go up like that. It's going to go off to the side. Let's make sure we got a lot. Now, not a lot, but enough so it stays sharp. And we can come down, start to curl it in, and then we can work from there. That'll be cool. Very cool. All right, this guy's going to come around. And he's gonna be thicker. So why don't we come up like that? There we go. Each section. 
Aha, that's how we're gonna do it. Fill it in backwards. Come up and around, and then fill in our the rest of our little mountain as we see fit. See that? Pulling it around just like that. Very cool. Very cool. Just trying to make my shape right. And the thickness and the perspective of it all. There we go. And then as we come up here, we're going to lose that little bit as it gets thicker. Yeah, perfect. Take this guy and just pull him out to the side because we're going to blend him and pull him away. Very cool. But we don't want to have too much paint everywhere, right? That's not the thing. So grab our one inch brush and where you can grab it, slide it out. Just let it blend in with those colors underneath. Remember, it's supposed to be dark. It's not supposed to be super bright. And just pull it out kind of down towards us this way. We know it's got that big thing down underneath here, but the back of it is very soft. And then we kind of come this way, right? It's all the directions of which you pull. Just kind of spreading it out, looking down. And figuring it out. Now let's take a little bit of liquid white just because it's going to help kind of blend it away. And take a little bit of liquid white. Just put it on the edge, and again, it's gonna, it's not gonna be white, white. We're gonna move it and move it and move it until it becomes, the more and more we blend, the more it's gonna kind of blend away, right? But we gotta have some light area on the top there. So just on the outside, right, it was there. There's a little bit over here. Just a little bit of difference in that light. Just a little twinge, just like that, it's perfect. All you need, the littlest bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit more in here on the underside, maybe on the outer side, just so it's enough. It doesn't have to be the most perfect thing you've ever seen, right? Blend that guy down. All we're doing is turn the brush sideways so we can push more and not have it really grow. It's almost like we're erasing that, kind of blending it with the brush that way. Right? Just pulling it out very lightly. I don't have the most steady hand, so it's not gonna be the most perfect thing, but I like it. There we go. Just like that, a little bit of light on the top, right? Again, the more and more we go over it, the more it's gonna blend away until we have just that little bit of edge on there, which is all we really need. Now we need to lighten up the bottom here. So let's go from here up to the top, not up to the top, but you know, far enough up. Stay on the edge and then we'll blend it back and forth. Get that lightness in there, that's very cool. Get that lighter color down here on our, on our ground, right? And then we'll start to shape. And take a little bit of that kind of light, whitish, greenish color. And we'll start to shape it down like this. Just so we can see where the, the ground is gonna be Everything like that. Pull it out to the side. Leave those little differences in our brush though. We don't need it to be perfect, right? And the more and more we add, the harder it's going to be to make it go dark again. There we go. So just very lightly work it in. This bit on the top. We have to have shadows, but we got to let it get light as it comes down here too. All right? Give me this bit. I told you it was going to go down that way. Slides down just a little though. All right, we don't want to have too much, almost like a big wave. We don't want to have too much light in our dark area where we need it though. That's the key. Very lightly, because it's going to start to mix with all those colors. Remember the angles that we were going, all right? The more and more you push on it, the darker it'll become. Very lightly pull it down, start to see where the rest of our scene is going to come into, right? It starts to really make it soft. Get some very cool things happening. Let's take this funky brush, just because it's very flat, and see if we can't just blend out the smallest little bit of line out of there. 
right? If you, br if you drag from that dark and bring it into the light, you can change your light just a little bit. You know what I mean? Pull some of that darkness into the light. There we go. That's not bad. That is not bad right there. Again, we want to take just the smallest little bit of light right there. Pull it down. Bam. Got our very cool little thing. Very cool. I like that. I like that one. Let's see. Let's put a few little a few little pumpkins in. And I think if we come out here with this darker color and we just toss in a couple little circular shapes with our our fam or our filbert brush, right? If we didn't have a big old chunk of paint right there. Just a couple shape, like push it in, pull it out, all right? Let's try that. Come over here, maybe this guy's a little bit bigger. By maybe turning and rotating, all right? We can start to see these little pumpkins and then we can go back and add some faces to them and stuff. Maybe there's one down here. Start to rotate the brush around. Make sure you got that dark color in there, but you gotta have that lighter color in there as well, just to help it. All right, maybe there's a further away one over here. Just kind of push and let go. Push and let go. Here is one down here too. All right, little guys. Now we can decide where we want the base of them to live just by pulling them out. And then we can push them all the way back. We can bring them forward. We can have some of them be back, you know, further behind other ones if we wanted to. Different little things. These guys, they could be on the same level or they could be, you know, one of them's a little bit further back. This one's a little bit further or a little bit closer. All depends. All depends. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of the red with the yellow. Let's see if we can't mix in a little orange color right here. Get a little crimson. Just enough to put a, a very light line out on our, our pumpkins out there. Just a very light little highlight bit. All right, spin our brush, make it nice and pointy, a nice sharp edge, and see what we can do on these guys out here. Just again, because all we're trying to do is add the littlest bit of detail on these guys, right? Small little things. Doesn't need to be the whole pumpkin that's lit up. We know there are pumpkins back there. All right, so just little, little bits, little highlights, different little things that are going on different bits of color. Maybe some of the pumpkins are a little bit brighter in some areas, a little bit darker in other areas. All depends, right, on how you mix it up. Now, what is yours gonna look like just based on how you're putting the, that little highlight on there? Right? Again, we don't want them to all look the same color. So if it starts looking too much like the same color, get a little bit of the yellow ochre, which is the darker color yellows, and you can kind of give it just a little bit of a shadow in there, just so it's not a perfect thing, right? We don't want it to be a perfect thing. We don't want it to be perfect. What I do want to do is have a little bit of that lighter color just on the top, so you can tell it's getting hit by the light. And then maybe that darker color down underneath here. Right? We can push it back, and bleed that light back up, just by pushing it up like that. See down here, we've got a, this guy's a little bit more close up. You see a little bit more detail in him, All right? But you gotta have enough of your little color on there in order to leave little bits. Just a little bit of color. The more we push, the more it's gonna change and blend in with that dark color underneath. And that'll give you cool little highlights and little things, little differences is all we're looking for. Again, it's a nighttime scene. What are we gonna see at night? Not a lot, not everything. Just around the top. Just so we have a little bit of highlight on our little pumpkins back there. Now, what we can really do is grab a little bit of our liquid white on that same brush, mix it in with our our brightest yellow, right? Just mix it up so it's nice and super bright yellow. And then we should be able to paint a couple little jack-o'-lantern faces, maybe at least on these biggest ones right here. Let's use the old mall stick. 
maybe we could put a guy right in here. Yeah. If you have enough liquid white and yellow, it'll transfer on to our, our painting. You don't want to have a whole huge amount, but you want to have enough where it's going to be able to be, you know, it's going to easily stick on to the paint, the thick paint that we have underneath, right? Just a little thing, a couple of little bits, little differences, little things here and there are what's going to make your painting really cool, right? I mean, this bigger one back here, he had a, just a little bit, right? He's got less detail on him because he's further away. But you know what it is. You know what I mean? This guy, a little bit more detail on him, and he's closer. It all makes sense. And that's why we do it like that. Right? He's a smiling jack-o'-lantern, this guy. Let's see what we can do on this little guy down here. A couple little triangle eyeballs. Let's see if we can get any little bit of it to stick. See, if it doesn't come off the brush, you don't have enough liquid white with it. And that is the secret. The secret is the liquid white. It helps be, make it very thin and it helps it come off the brush very easily. Very cool, I like that guy. Maybe this guy back here, he's had a couple dots. Just a little bit of detail, way off in the distance. Very cool. All right, let's work on our wall over here. Okay, now I had an idea to do almost like a, a thing here. So we'll come around, it's gonna be this like crazy jaggedy wall and it'll come up here and it'll come up and then it's just gonna stop, right? That's gonna be our wall. It's gonna be going down like this and we can blend in our little bits of of stone and different things, right? Just down like that. Very cool. Doesn't have to go all the way. Doesn't have to do anything, right? We can take our brush over here, start to pull the land out underneath it. So we know there's a little bit underneath. Maybe take just a little bit of that green. Oh yeah. Just literally like one dab of the brush though, because you don't want to have too much. You don't want to have it too bright over here. But we do want to let people know that there is a wall that's holding up a gate right there, right? Very dark, very dark little wall. Now let's take some of that light color again. We can come around and start to make the tip tops of our wall, right? Just little things, little bits. The wall's not a, a straight thing, not in my mind anyway. Not in uh, Halloween Town. There we go. Let's pull these guys down just the smallest bit. About as straight down as you can get them, right? Because we don't need a whole lot of paint in there. And that is amazing. Let's take a little bit of the white, our liquid white, in with this same color over here. Don't want it to be so super bright again, right? Just a little bit of the liquid white. Maybe we can start piecing in little bits of rock. Little stones here and there. Right? And they come down. They're all different shapes and stuff. This guy comes down over that way. Just little differences, little different things in our rock. A couple little cobblestones here and there holding stuff up, right? We don't want it to be so super bright again. So if you ever have a real bright area, keep going over it, just very lightly. And again, our, even the detail in these is so minute because it doesn't have to be. You don't have to see it all. Your mind's going to make up what all these little rocks and all these little things look like, right? Because it's dark over here. We can't really see it all. Let's take our brush just very lightly, so lightly. Oh, look, just we saved just a couple. That's all we really need. A couple little bits of our rock wall that are now stuck. We know they're there, right? Pull these guys out. And all that is is just a little bit of background for the tombstones that will be right here. All right, let's grab up our dark color. We're gonna to start to make these kind of cool little bits of our of our fence, right? And I'll show you what they look like. We'll light them up on this side, All right? A little bit of light on that guy, a little bit of light on that guy. You gotta have the dark in your, your, your shadow first though, All right? Different heights, maybe different angles. Maybe this guy goes off this way. They're not all the same. 
Got another little piece of shadow, a piece of light just on the one side. See how they're coming? So again, you go a little bit of darkness. Maybe this guy's like really off to the, the races over here. He's going off that side. And a little bit of light, just kind of push it up against that dark area, let it grow. Don't need a whole lot, a little bit more. Let's do one that kind of went up that way. He wasn't as tall, right? I like doing the, you can do multiple ones at a time. All right, just to show you, we'll come around here, a few little things. Don't want to have it be too big. Definitely not too thick with the paint either. That's not what you want. You don't want to have big, thick areas of our, our paint. Maybe that guy came out over here and this guy came out sideways over here. Now we're going to come back again, just very lightly, dropping a little bit of our light color just right on the edge of that other line of paint, just like that. See how they're going? You got to have a little half and half, light and dark, the same. You can't have it just be all one color. It's going to be not, you're not going to have any depth. It's going to be flat. And that's not what you want. Just like that. A little bit of light coming off of our poles. Very cool. Now we can come back in and start doing little things, little connecting pieces, right? Maybe this guy turns and goes down or he's up over here. There's another piece that wasn't even connected, right? It's a, it's a jaggedy old, old fence, let me tell you. A little piece like that, maybe a piece that came across there. You never know, right? Then we can always extend them taller, do different things. You can let it grow as you want. It's your fence. And there's a piece right there that wasn't even connected to the others, which I think is kind of cool. Angles are most important though. Remember your angles. And I think it looks cooler if it hangs over the each side a little bit. So let's make it do that. Just the smallest bit in different places, right? Have it overhang the thing so it looks like, I don't know, like a kid did it. Like a kid put it together. There's a bigger one over there. All right, see if we can't sneak a little bit of light. Boom, we've got our brand new little stake over there. Can we put any little bit? No, there's no light left. So a little bit of light, different places, different angles, right? Overhanging a little bit. You said that guy went down like that. Maybe it was over like this. All looks like a child might have put it together. All based on the angles, right? A little bit over there, a little bit on that guy. Tiny little things, little scrapes of paint are gonna make all the difference. Little things, little dabs. And we're not trying to touch on the dark paint. We're trying to touch around it, over the top of it. And that way it deposits itself onto the canvas and not onto the thick paint. See, very cool. Cool little thing. We probably just wrote a word backwards. We should have actually thought about that. <laughs> Could have thought about that, Josh. Put a little bit in there, a little bit over there, right? Every time you see a little light area or a dark area that doesn't have any light, you gotta add some, it needs it. Don't be too crazy though, All right? Throw a couple little swoopity swoops in here. Maybe we can add the, the, our round rock feel like that too. There we go, just pulling it down, got a cool little Nasty little old wall down here, right? Very cool. I like that. That's pretty neat. All right, now let's put in a few, maybe that, maybe a gravestone or two. All right, so let's come over here. And who knows? I want to do a crazy one. So let's go like this. Oh, you know what? We could do a tree from over here. Wow, what am I doing? Let's do this. And then we'll just throw this crazy tree out. It's got all these branches that'll go across the moon. Yeah, that'll be cool. I like that idea. All right, gotta make sure that it's dark and that it's thick enough to make sense. And where the bottom is, that you push it back far enough. If it's too big or if it's too small, you've gotta push it, all right? Throw a little tree in there. Oh, I like that old tree. Let's get a little bit of our paint thinner right into our kind of our brown or our, our dark mixture, just like that. 
want it to be thin enough where it wants to literally drip and roll down the canvas, right? Then maybe we come up in here and the harder you push, the thicker your branches will be. Obviously the lighter you push, the thinner and lighter they will become and pointier. Right? They don't all have to droop downwards. They can go crisscrossing. They can go back and forth. You can do whatever you want to do. You can make little designs inside. All sorts of things. Light pressure. Very light pressure. The harder you have to push, you should just kind of go back and get some more paint thinner because you're going to end up not liking what happens when you push it real hard. A couple of crisscrossing branches over there. Just a few little things, right? Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. I can't believe I almost didn't put a tree in here. It would have been like sacrilegious. There we go. That is cool. I like that. All right, again, let's take some of that lighter color, maybe a little bit of our liquid white. Not a whole huge amount. Don't need a whole, a whole lot. Just to be able to transfer some of that light color onto our branches, right? Just little different things different areas. You can put little tree roots in them if you wanted to. All depends what you want yours to look like, right? I just want to have a little bit of kind of highlight in there. As it's growing up into the tree. Very cool. All right, come up here. Kind of accentuate those branches in the real deep, dark section with just a little bit of light and it'll, your mind will fill in the rest. Right? Your mind's gonna go, ooh, that looks kinda cool. How does that, where's that connected? Oh, that's neat, I like that. A right? little bit of light, a little bit of dark. A little bit of both, that's what you gotta have. Maybe we'll come up here on top of this guy. Right? Little differences, little dark darknesses, different darknesses all over the place. Little things, don't want to have too much. There we go. Very cool. Very, very cool. Cool things. Again, you do one too many, you're not going to like it. So pick where you want them. Be very skinny with the brush. Don't need a whole lot. Don't want to cover up everything, right? This guy will go off that way, or I'll pull him down there. Bam, looks very cool, I like that. All right, now let's add in a little tombstone down here, like I was saying before. A little bit of white, a little bit of our dark color, just kind of makes this silvery grayish color. All right, gonna try to get it all off the brush. Definitely need a new fan brush, that's for sure. Or a new filbert brush. I should probably add that to the store as well. There we go. Just kind of lightly pulling down on our tree. It takes away some of those little details that are a little bit too bright for me and I didn't really want all of them in there. All right, and then maybe down at the base of this guy, there was a little tombstone. And just like that, fill this poor guy in. Fill him in, what happened? Oh, uh, buddy, you died. There we go. And you can just, again, push them back until you like the way that it looks. That's literally it. Now, what I want to do, take a little bit of our dark color, just the smallest little bit, and you got to give it a, a bit of 3D feel. So we're going to start from the top corner over here, if we can zoom in far enough, all the way down, right? And then we're going to take it around the edge. And that is going to make our our little thing look more 3D, just that little bit of dark line in between. Fantastic. Fantastic. And just let it blend in with the colors underneath. You can write something on it if you wanted to, if you've got a good enough penmanship. You could do all sorts of stuff. All right, you could do, let's do this. Let's paint in the word zero. Damn. Zero. That's cool. All right. We can put in a few more. Let's put some in over on this side. 
Again, just making this dark so we know it's a, a brick wall. We know what it is. But we just don't want to have too many little details in there because it's going to take away. It's going to take away from what we want it to be. So a little bit of white. Come in here, brighten up our darker color. And maybe there was like a bigger one. How's it gonna look? It's gonna go that way. So we're gonna go right down, right through here. Pop them in like that, right? You can make it as big as you want, as little as you want, but make sure you put them above the brick wall. It's gonna make it look more realistic. All right, go back to that color again. And it's all about the angle of our thing. It's not straight. It's very much on an angle. It has to be. It's got to be. Now, we've got to make it dark down around the bottom for sure. Again, we want to have it have depth, right? Put something in there, make it look a little bit darker, a little bit of a shadow on one side. Maybe the bottom was a little bit shadowed over here. All depends on what you want yours to look like. And we can always go back in with the white and just brighten it up on some sides. Bring it together. You can have the white connect, you can have it not connect, do whatever you want, right? All depends on what you want yours to look like. You can even blend it down. Remember, make sure you've got a dark side to it. It's vital to have a dark side. Even Yoda knew you have to have a dark side. There we go. Let's put another little guy in front of him. Just like that. Try to make him straight, gosh. And this is why we put those darkness, those dark areas in there, those little differences. You have to have them. You want to have them in there. Take this guy, maybe we'll look at him like this. Remember, go back, get your dark, come back in here. Feed it down. Blend it together, feed it down again. And now you've got your own little 3D tombstone. Bam, that dark color in there. Very cool. Now again, you can write whatever you wanted to write in your black or your dark color. I don't want to get too crazy. Yeah, just like that. Very cool little things. Cool little things and the more and more you do, the more and more you want to do. And we put another one back here. Just a small little guy, right? He'll be on this line of, as it's coming down the hill. And you just kind of pick and choose where you want stuff, right? It's like, you, no one can, gonna tell you, oh, that shouldn't go there. That doesn't look right. No one's gonna tell you that. Let's go back and get that little bit of lighter color and we can just pop just a little bit on there. All right, and then we'll just mix it in, blendy, blendy, blendy. Want to have differences, remember, on the, even on these ones that are further away, still want to have a little bit of difference in there. Go back to our soft brush, really pull it. Maybe there's a ghost coming out of this one. Ooh, that's gonna look cool. Right? A little bit of a ghostly shape. Maybe we can make a little ghostly shape. Let's take a little bit of that white. And who knows, maybe up here. It's like into his... There we go. Just a little bit of that kind of lighter color. Turn it into a little ghostly person. Because that's all it is. All right, coming out of his grave. Which got too covered. There we go. Come back with our smaller brush. Add our little bit of light. 
kind of on the edge. Have it mix in. Very cool, very cool. And again, just keep playing with it until you like how it looks. Doesn't have to be crazy. See if we can't get it to be a little bit brighter though. Just a touch. Poof, just like that, that's good. I like that. Grab this brush, pull it out on the bottom. Making it nice and soft. Just like so, we got our own little ghost man coming out. Very cool. Very cool. I think so. I think we need a, maybe one more down in here. Let's grab up a little bit more of that dark. Our crimson, black, and blue. A little bit of the brown too, why not? And let's put another one, I don't know. I don't want to cover up too much of my, my, uh, my brick wall back there. I like it so much. I don't want to cover it up too much. There we go. A little bit of dark shadow underneath. That's all we need. Down the side. Very cool. Damn. Got to split those guys up. Little differences in color, right? All right, a little bit more of our darker color. Our kind of shadowy color. And let's do another one. Just go for it, Josh. Just right here. All right, little arc. Fill it in. Come back. A little bit of white. Maybe go around the edge. Pull it down. And the more and more we mix in, the lighter and darker it's going to become until you want to have it how you like it, and then you stop. Ooh, this one might look cool if it was turned this way. There we go. Beautiful. And all I did was take our extra little bit that's usually on the right over here, and we put it to the other side. All depends on how we pull out the bottom. And you got a cool little grave right there. Take our dark, and now we're gonna come down this side. And this is a big old thick gravestone. Look at this guy, this paid a lot of money for this. All right, keep that darkness. Damn, very cool. It just separates it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's see. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. You can write little stories. All right, making sure the, the perspective is right. There we go. Just little things, little, little details. Somebody might think they can read and it's gonna make them wanna zoom into your painting and go, oh, he got me. I can't read that. There we go, little things, but it looks like writing to me anyway. Got our little ghost off in the distance. Very cool. Very cool. Now, let's see if we can't do, just because I'm feeling it, I'm feeling lucky, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling it. Let's see. What if we had just little silhouette legs, right? That's all we need. Bam, very cool. All right, a little bit more dark. Just a little dark on the brush, that's all we need. All right, you don't wanna have it too much, obviously. It's very skinny, I wish I had, I wish I had his. Here we go. Wish I had his physique, sorry. Not too bad. Not too bad, but not the best. Not the best thing I've ever seen. So we either decide to keep it or we get rid of it. And getting rid of it is very, very easy because we didn't use a whole lot of paint. We're gonna take our little guy, I'm just gonna blend him away. The more and more we swipe, the more and more he will blend away. Try not to hit anything else or any other part of our, our mountain. And poof, just like that, he is gone from existence. No longer can he harm us, right? Very cool. I like that. 
super neat. Okay, let's add a little bit of light down around the bottom just because it's not very bright. So let's add a little bit down here, All right? Different little things. As we come down, they might've gotten lit up. But we don't wanna overdo it. We don't wanna have too many little light areas, right? So don't go crazy. And then we can blend over that, All right? It's never what it looks like then. It's what it looks like once it's been blended out. Cause you'll get rid of all those little, those cool little um, strokes from your brush and different things. It'll blend those things out so they won't look like an accident or a mistake, right? You can blend it literally until you like how it looks and it is done. It's your painting. It's very cool. I like that. It's very neat. I think it needs to be a little bit brighter though. So let's get a little bit brighter. Ooh, we could even pop in little bits of grass in here. That might look kind of cool. Yes. I we did that coming down the hill, off in the distance, very lightly, skipping areas, kind of feeding it down. Right. Very lightly in betwixt our pumpkins. Those little soft little things out there. Little bits of grass, they start getting taller and growing up as they come over here. Very, very cool. I like that. go right over our little ghost guy because he is a ghost that's pretty cool bam 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 now what do we do with that we take them just very lightly trying not to touch anything else make it soft 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 little tiny strokes straight up All right just to soften it down a little bit just like that that's pretty cool. I think we lost too much of our, our little ghost man. No, I want to really accentuate the ghost man. Just a little ghostly shape coming out of there. That's all we got to do, right? Now we're going to take it and make it soft. Pulling down, pulling up. Like he's coming right out of the grave. Very cool. But we gotta have that disconnect of color. So take your dark and make that line separate those two guys right there. You don't wanna have, you know, white on white on white on white. You have to separate it with a bit of darkness. Yeah, just like that. Very cool. Very cool. If we could make it any bit brighter back here is all I'm trying to do, just the smallest bit brighter. And the more and more you go over it, the softer it becomes, right? Just like that. Even be softer with our, our other brush. Pulling up, pulling to the side, doing all sorts of stuff until you like the way that it looks, because that's all that matters. Let's take this guy, come down, come down. Go back, get, you know, make sure you got enough paint on your brush to have it look how you want it to look. Right? And the more and more we mix in, the more it will mix in. Can you imagine? Very soft with the one inch brush. Just trying to use the, the very corner. There we go. I like that. It looks more spooky anyway. And that's what the fun thing. You, you'll find something that's like, oh, that's... You know, you sit there and work on it. You're like, oh, I hate it. And someone else will come and go, oh my God, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It looks like a ghost is coming up out of the, out of the grave, which is kind of cool in my eyes. Right? Just mix them up a little bit. Very neat. Very neat. What if he had like bright yellow eyeballs? And you're like, ah, what is that? Here we go. Just a couple little things. Just somebody might see it and go, what in the goodness sake? There we go. All right. Keep putting my brushes down, then I can't find them. And that's never fun. And these are very lightly outlined. A 
little teeny, teeniest line of white. So soft. Little differences. Like he's just a little bit of, little puff of smoke. Very cool. Okay, let's throw the old signature in. We'll be, put some birds in here. We'll be done. Let's get up in here. And let me come over like this. Bam. Right on. All right, now I'm gonna take my liquid white. We're gonna dip it into our little white section, right? It's kind of gray from the black, which is fine. I don't want it to be so super bright white. That's not gonna make any sense. And we'll throw the old family up in the sky for this one. Let's see. Where is the old family gonna live? Let me do one. All right, maybe we can do us as bats again. That was kind of cool. Far away little bat. Just kind of fill him in, but make sure we got our, our points. That's what, a, what determines a bat is the shape for sure. Fill him in there. Cool little bat. He's awesome. He is a cool little bat. All right, let's do another one, maybe further. There we go. It's hard to make them when they're very small. You get a very small little bat, and that's difficult. You know, just mixing them in until they kind of blend in with the color around them, right? Just mixing it up, mixing it in. That guy looks a little funky. So let's get a little bit of darkness and we'll shrink him back to whatever shape we think he should be. There we go. Just kind of mix the rest of that darkness into our sky back there. You'll never see it. There we go. That'll be the right kind of shape. And then we'll go for the third bat of the family. Maybe that's a little Bailey. It's kind of cool. Make it a little bit brighter. Just a little bit. Man. Again, doesn't have to be the most perfect shape because people don't know what it is, right? They're all flying a little bit differently. Very cool. And put some up here and do some different things. All sorts of things. You can have them flying all over the place. All different things, right? Very cool. You can put them anywhere you want to put them. And that's where I'm putting mine. Very neat. All right, well, I hope you guys like this one. I hope it turned out as uh, good as you thought it was going to initially. And uh, I got to get off this stool because my butt is just starting to hurt. Let me tell you. I got to fix this easel situation. Get a little bit taller. Grow grow up just a little bit and a little bit more light right underneath these guys right here there's another little just a couple little details is all we're looking for and then just blend it in until it doesn't look so dark but it's got to be bright on the top dark on the bottom so let it get dark it's got to start out a little bit brighter at the top and then as it goes down it becomes darker and darker and darker right very cool very very neat we could do that on these guys 
these cool little differences in our There we go. Now it's not so perfect. It's an old thing. Fantastic. I don't want it to be so perfectly straight. There we go. So perfect. Uh, there we go. A couple little differences in there. All right. Well, guys. Again, I appreciate you guys for uh, tuning in, for watching, for checking out all the videos. I really hope you try this one and send it in uh, during the, the October Tis the Halloween season, right? So uh, until we see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day.